Please join me in welcoming Mr. Gregory Nava. Thank you so much, and thank the Academy and uh, the museum for this screening of, uh, of Eleanor. Immigrants are poisoning the blood of America. When I heard those words, it was like a spear in my soul. And it was even deeper and more hurtful when I found out that those words made him more popular. What has happened to our country? The refugees that are on our border seeking asylum here aren't here because they want to be. Nobody leaves their home because they want to. They're driven out by violence and by poverty. And they come here to be accepted but we do not want to accept them. Even though we need them, we need their youth, we need their energy, we need their values, we need their labor to keep our country young and strong. But still, we do not accept them. As Rosa says so movingly in the film El Norte, Maybe it is only in death where we can find our own. Those words that she speaks in this film are more relevant today, even more relevant than when we made this film 40 years ago. The situation hasn't changed. What you will see in the film is still true today. It breaks my heart. And it broke my heart 40 years ago when I set upon making this film. We made this film for very, very little money. It was made with five people in a Volkswagen van and one camera. Wow. We shot in dangerous and difficult locations. Even though we had a minimal amount of money and a minimal crew filming in places that had never been filmed in before in unbelievably difficult conditions. We were determined. We were young and we were full of, 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 of desire. We wanted to make a film that was just as beautiful and just as epic as any film by David Lean. And when you see this magnificent restoration that was done by the Academy Archive. You'll see all the vibrant colors, what we brought to the screen, and it will show you what five people can do with passion and with love. We wanted to, to take the audience on the journey of Rosa and Enrique on all real locations, a real Mayan village in the Mayan highlands, the slums of Tijuana that we had to shoot with a hidden camera because we weren't allowed to show them, and the sweatshops of Los Angeles. It was dangerous. We were almost killed making this film. I had to face off against men with sunglasses and machine guns who wanted to, in Mexico, who wanted to shut this film down but they didn't succeed. We found a way to finish the film. And when it opened theatrically in New York on January 10th, 1984, this is the 40th anniversary this week of El Norte. There was a line around the block. People wanted to see this film. And everywhere it played, there were lines around the block. It played here in Los Angeles 
at the Music Hall Theater, which is close to here, for one year. It's still the longest running film in the history of the Music Hall Theater. It created a tremendous stir. It was the number one grossing art house film that year. We outgrow Spinal Tap, we outgrow the Madness of King George, we outgrow everything. And then this miracle happened. It was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. I, I'm the first Latinx filmmaker to be nominated for an Academy Award, and this was the first independent film to be nominated for an Academy Award. In those days, it was all Hollywood films. And it was a total miracle. And to me, it's like the purest Academy nomination because we had no Academy campaign. Nobody thought that such a thing was possible. The distributor never even considered it. There was no campaign. There were no ads. There were no screeners. There was nothing. I was out gardening in my yard when I got this phone call that said, you've been nominated for an Academy of the Word. I went, what? I was speechless. I think I fainted. <laughs> you know? And Anna Thomas and I, who wrote the screenplay, we were nominated together, so each one of us was able to invite a guest. And so we invited David Vialpando and Zayda Silvia Gutierrez, the marvelous young actors who play Rosa and Enrique in this film, Indígenas. They're both indigenous actors from Mexico. Their performances are so wonderful, so beautiful. You really take them to your heart and are probably the central reason why people love the film so much because they love those two people. And what they went through in order to make this film was unbelievable. So we invited them to come to Los Angeles for the ceremony. And it was wonderful. It was at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. It was a magnificent ceremony. We were so excited. And I'm going to tell you an Academy story. <laughs> After the Oscars, in those days, they had the great celebratory dinner. And unlike today, in those days, it was a sit-down dinner where you sat at a table and you were served by all of these waiters and and, uh, you know, uh, uh, people serve and servers, all right? And so Zayda and David are with me and Anna, and we're sitting there at our table. And of course, all the greatest stars and all the greatest luminaries, the studio heads and directors, produce, they're all there at this dinner, all right? But all the waiters and all the servers, they're all Latinos and Latinas, all of them, of course. So they come to our table, serving champagne. And I'll never forget, this lady comes and she's serving us champagne. And suddenly she sees Zayde and David. And she goes, Rosa and Enrique. <laughs> you know? And they go, yeah, well, see, see, stop with the woman. That's, that's, that's. By the way, the woman couldn't even, you know, see, you know. So pretty soon word gets around, you know? that Rosa and Enrique are in the, the dinner. And pretty soon, all of the help, <laughs> one by one, make their way to our table <laughs> to meet Rosa and Enrique. It meant the world to them oh. that they were there. Because if Rosa and Enrique were there with all the greatest stars and directors and producers of Hollywood, it meant that they were there. That they were seen, and they were not shadows. They didn't care about any of the stars or any of the actors. They didn't care about them. All they cared about was Rosa and Enrique. And oh my God, they, our table was plied with champagne and caviar, <laughs> more than you could possibly imagine. And all everybody around was going like, who is at your table? I want to sit at your table. <laughs> It was an incredible moment, a beautiful moment that I'll never forget. And I'm very, very proud of that moment. But that is not the thing that I am most proud about this film. The impact that this film had was so strong. You know, the other day I was going through my garage with all the boxes of everything from my career, and I came across this box 
with all of these petitions and this group of, of uh, uh, immigrant rights people that I worked with and the Kanhubal, the Mayan refugee community that worked with us to get information out, using the success of the film to put pressure on Congress and in 1986, and you know how slow it takes for laws to get passed in Congress. Mm -hmm. This was a very short amount of time after the movie was released. The Congress of the United States passed protective status for the Mayan refugees from Guatemala and for all refugees from El Salvador. And all of these Mayan refugees that I worked with making the movie El Norte, as a result of the success of this film, got legal status. The film saved thousands of lives. And that is the thing that I am most proud that I have done as a filmmaker. That I made a movie which saved thousands of lives. Which just goes to show that five people in a Volkswagen van can make a movie that saves lives and changes the law mm -hmm. of the United States. Thank you very much. <laughs>